ladies and gentlemen, here's a man who walked his butts off and traveled around the world to bring you exciting stories of fascinating destinations and amazing helpful ideas to make your lives easier. He's a man of many moves and definitely many recipes. Here's our wacky walker, Stephen Yan. Well, you want to know what's up? You know, touching can be a very touchy experience. In most places around the world, you know, handshake is accepted. But in Latin America, you know, they normally will take the hug. You know, they call that a brazo. And uh, they hug each other. Okay? But you cannot hug everybody in every country. For example, in Thailand, you cannot hug. Because they would stay away and do the, what they call the way, the why. And then go like this. Now, normally, the junior one will why to the senior one. So if you are senior, you wait for the junior to do that first. Uh -huh. Give them a chance. Otherwise, you know, you'll be in trouble. Now, in Japan, they don't why, they don't shake hands, but they bow. Now, they just put the hand you know, to down here and then keep on bowing, and then keep on bowing. The more junior you are, you keep on bowing lower. <laughs> and then you are very junior. You will bow down all the way to the floor. But one thing for sure, you never put the hands you know, in your pocket while you're bowing because that is considered to be very, very impolite. Okay? Now, I'd like to tell you, you know, how different uh, countries react when they see a pretty girl. You know, in, in America, they will raise their eyebrow, Ooh, good stuff, you know, something like that. But the Italian, they would you know, press their forefinger to the cheek and then rotate you know, like this. Mm good, you know. And then the Greek, you know, they will stroke their cheek, you know, good. And then when two Arabians dancing together, you call them dancing chic to chic. <laughs> we have a wonderful show for you, and I'm sure, you know, you're going to like it. Uh -huh. Now, traveling with children can be a lot of work, and sometimes they may cause stress and discomfort to the average traveler. A friend of mine will offer helpful hints to keep the kids amused during the flight, and at the same time provide the parents with a pleasant trip. We will see some exotic animals doing their special tricks that will make the Moscow Circus green with envy. They are one of its kind and can only be found in Thailand. Another exotic performance will be a northern lion dance in Hong Kong. There's also the fan dance, the carpet dance, which are very colorful and very traditional. If you think an airline hostess is just a glorified waitress in the sky after you have seen our interview, you might have a different opinion and a different respect. There's a lot for us to learn in this show, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy our lineup. <laughs> well, I fly a lot in the airplane, and a lot of people, they think, that, OK, you know, working in the airline, is as a, uh, a flight attendant, it's a glorified job, but it's not. You know, there's a lot to learn in order to become a flight attendant. Working as an airline hostess can be a very challenging job. You have to be a mother, you have to be a nurse, and you have to be a world traveler. Now, today I have a special friend. Her name is Carrie Shield, and she's a senior person from the Cafe Pacific Airway. Hi, Kerry. Can you tell me what are the basic requirements to be an airline stewardess? They have to be at least 19 to 27 years old, at least 160 centimeter tall, and uh, a, uh, reach certain academic requirement. And they have to be fluent in English and one Asian language. And the most important thing is they have to have a pleasant and outgoing uh, personality, like to help others, and the most important of all, hardworking. Can you tell me what sort of training does a cabin attendant have to go through? They have to undergo six weeks very intensive training and it covers um, aircraft procedures, um, meals and cocktail service, public address systems. Let's say for example for aircraft procedures, you have to know about the aircraft features because a lot of the girls haven't got a chance to be on board the aircraft yet. Like the galley systems, like the communication, the lighting and the video. 
and as for the meal and cocktail, food and beverage is very important in the airline business. So they will be well trained to be professional and competent in this area. Like for example, they know the names of the liqueurs and liquors we serve on board and they will be able to pronounce all the menus correctly. As for the public address systems, a lot of the messages will be delivered through the public address system. So they, they have to learn the skills so that the message will be delivered clear and specifically. And as for grooming and deportment, whenever we are wearing uniform, we are in the public eyes and we are representing Cathay Pacific. So it's important for them to learn how to apply makeup, a reasonable amount of makeup to match our uniform, and also uh, their manners and behaviors in front of the public eyes. And as for person to person, they all speak their own Asian language. And we do emphasize that if they be able to learn other European language. But the most important thing is we have a team language, which is English. That's why we have a very well equipped language lab. So we'll train them on this area specifically. How long do they take to take up the language lab? Do they spend the time there for months or weeks? Oh, it will be depends on the progress. We have individual tuition as well. Depends on how she can up, catch up with the course and her standards. And all this will be learned within six weeks' times. And our passing mark is very high. They have to achieve at least 80% for all our lectures and practicals in the assimilation mock-up. Now, what about some uh, children? They fly on their own. They accompany passengers and understand that your airline have some special arrangements, some sort of club or mm -hmm. some uh, even flying mother. Yes, we do. For uh, young passengers traveling along with us, uh, we have assigned CAs, uh, cabin attendants, to help them throughout the whole flight. As if there are several children traveling with us alone, then we will assign uh, experience, what we call fine mum, to go with them and then we accompany them until they arrive at the destination. So maybe next time you can assign one of the flying mum for me. I, I love to fly with mum. Do you really listen? <laughs> Coming up, I'm going to take you to Hong Kong to see some of the traditional Chinese entertainment. It's very interesting and colourful. I'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, in China, the lion is considered to be a sign of prosperity. And when I was in Hong Kong, I got a chance to see my prosperity dance. This is called the Lion Dance. In China, the lion dances are performed during happy occasions such as New Year, opening up a business or during the parade. There are two kinds of lion dances. One is a southern lion that is considered to be a symbol of power and agility. The other one is the northern lion as you see in this act. The body of this lion is more gold in color. Gold is a symbol of prosperity. Often used in the northern part of China, these lions perform in pairs. They always play with each other and are very popular, especially with children. Each lion is performed by two people with the steps guided by the beating of the gongs in the background music. It requires a lot of good coordination. It's a team effort. Let's see if we can follow their steps. Cosmopolitan city and wherever you go you see 
brand new buildings everywhere. In fact, they have one of the most expensive buildings in the world. It costs 15 billion Hong Kong dollars to build. It's called the Hong Kong Bank. Now, in spite of all the modern buildings, people still remember the old traditional entertainment. Right in the middle of the city of Hong Kong, there's a replica of an old Chinese village called the Song Dynasty Village. This was built next to an amusement park in Kowloon, occupying an area of 15,000 square feet. And close by high walls, this village is a great place to enjoy the arts and crafts and entertainment dating back 1,000 years. One of the many performances is this traditional Chinese fan dance. This dance is performed by young ladies dressed up in colorful costumes. Each move is well choreographed with authentic music. The fan dance is a form of expression using feather fans to display the gentleness and gracefulness of the ladies. In the olden days, this dance was performed for the kings in the royal palace. Nowadays, you can watch this wonderful performance in this village several times a day. The king used to see it once a day, and you see more. It's a better deal than the kings used to get. Chinese are famous for their acrobatic skill. This lady is trying to balance the ceramic bucket. It requires a lot of concentration, balance, and most of all, a pair of strong legs to kick the bucket. Don't try this at home though, you might get a hernia. This is a balanced act you can try at home. All you need is a small carpet. Find the center point, use your feet to turn, and you can perform an act like this. Isn't that fun? Now you think one is easy. You should try this for a change. The three of them, with balanced skill like that, I think she would make a great finance minister for our government. Don't you agree? Coming up, I'm going to get a friend of mine who is an expert in traveling with children so that you can be sure to travel with comfort and safety. I'll be right back. Now, are you ready? I'm going to take you to a zoo in Thailand and where I saw some animals doing their things just like human beings. This zoo offers unusual performances available only in Thailand. This Bengal tiger was caught in the northern part of Thailand and recently gave birth to five baby tigers. Another name for Thailand is the land of the free. The animals are free and well-loved and well-respected. They're so tame that this caretaker can actually go in with bare hand and bring out the babies for display. Bengal tigers are very colorful animals. 
But the baby, they have a little bit pale color and just lovely as a doll. I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to hold this baby tiger, who is only four months old. Now, isn't that cute? While I was holding the baby, the mother was pacing back and forth in the cage. I think it's natural for any mother Crocodiles are often referred to as untrainable animals. But in this zoo, there's a crocodile wrestling show that is so unique, and the trainer can even tell a crocodile to walk with him. These snappy critters are all under his command because he has treated them just like their children. Now look at that, I don't think Paul Hogan would have the nerve to play Dundee like that. There's another popular animal show in this zoo. Elephants are particularly well respected in Thailand. They are great entertainers as well as hard workers. They are used as locking machines to bring out heavy teak wood from the forest. In spite of their size, they are also excellent soccer players. Now with a size like this, you don't want to tackle a player like that when he's going for a goal. It's very easy to please these intelligent animals as long as you have some sugar cane. They will walk with you at any time. Now this one seems to know how to find his way. I think he could make a living as a pickpocket. Well, traveling with children can be a lot of fun. But if you're not prepared, it can be a lot of frustration and irritation. And we are very lucky today. We have our friend, and she's going to uh, show us how to look after the children. Because you work for the airline, uh, which has the special service to make the miles fly by so easily, and then you have a wonderful trip, and peaceful trip as well. Please join me in welcoming my good friend, Irene Lee. Hi, Irene. Good. How are you? Hi, thank you. Good. Now, isn't that true? You know, if you bring the children for travel, particular air travel, if you're not prepared, then you can be, you know, getting into a lot of trouble. Yes. Uh, you should be prepared well ahead of time. Phone up the airlines if you have an infant, and then request for bassinets. Right. Uh, so that, that what, well, that's the area called they call a bulkhead. Bulkhead, it? yeah, so that the children can play around in front and not have to run into everybody. Those are the front row seats. Front row seats. And then there's more leg room for them to walk around. Walk around and play under the seat so they want to. What about if they have to change diaper? You know, do you have any... Uh, oh, yes. We have two toilets in the aircraft, especially for babies, so they can change their diapers. And there's a diaper board which you can fold down. It's a fold-down table. And you can change your baby there with no hassle at all. Oh, that's good. I never yes. tried that. But anyway, one day <laughs> I'll bring a baby. Ah, I see you have some goodies here. Yes. Yeah. Do you give this away to the travelers? Oh yes, this is for be below two, children below two. And you can phone us up to ask for extra diapers. You don't extra have to diaper. carry on That's too right. much baggage. Oh, good idea. And these yeah. are disposable. That's disposable. So when I finish on the first row, I just throw it to the second row customer. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? That's an idea. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we have baby All the baby oil. needs. Yes. Oh, the... even this, eh? Yes. Ah, this is it. Uh -huh. And what about uh, some uh, baby blanket and things like that you have though? Oh, yes. We have those when, you, uh, pro when we provide the bassinets. Do you? Yes. Okay. And pillows. And you have and this uh, little uh, sucker. Yes, to keep them baby. quiet. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. something to chew on. Okay, I better take this thing off because I'm going to go for dinner later on. No, it looks on. good on you. It looks good on me? Okay. Now, what about this baby uh, thing here? Yes. So, so they, far, so good? Yes. <laughs> they can now, all these are for the baby? Yes, this is all for the babies. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. babies, no problem. You no can, problem. You can put them with the bassinet and then uh, they will be okay. That's so true. what about uh, all those, what I call the rascals? Two years old to the oh, six yeah. years old. They're running like mad. Now, you, I see you have something yes. here for them. We have this for three to six years old. We have a backpack here. Yeah, this is for yeah. them to put all yeah. the goodies. And they can use it for school in the future too. Yeah, this is a good idea. Yeah. Quite often when I travel with uh, little kids, you know, mm -hmm. and I normally would uh, uh, get them involved yes. to uh, 
pack their own stuff in the oh, bag. Oh, yes. <laughs> if okay. they still need diapers, you now, can, can you tell me what other stuff you know is available? Okay. I, uh, I have... act a little bit silly with this thing on. <laughs> okay. There's a tic-tac-toe. And there's uh, some game right yes, here. Some, huh? some game here. That they can uh, make their puzzle, mm -hmm. things like that. Fly a, in the sky. A coloring book. Coloring book. And crayons, of course. Uh-huh. And, and the plane for them to fly. Yes. <laughs> I hope they are not the pilot. Okay. No. And, then some and of these we have gummy people. bears and uh -huh. a lot of candy. We also have children's meal on board for the children, like Mars bars. So they don't oh, really I have see. to bring too much. Oh, that's a good yes. idea. Keep them busy all the yes. time. And for okay. the little kids who oh, want to start gambling. What the heck is this? <laughs> start gambling now. Yes. Eh? So two years old and six years old, they can uh, go to uh, lost wages. <laughs> <laughs> No, really, that's not recommended. What the heck? Well, what about after six years old? You know, they are a little bit grown up, but they're still running around. You have something oh, yes. to keep them busy. Um, we have, uh, you have put a, them in an executive in Oh, executive. Bag. Young yeah. executive. <laughs> Good uh, idea. Hmm. And then you have some of these, uh, also the gambling card. Gambling again. cards. Oh, boy, but this everybody time we gamble. have chess instead. Oh, the little chess. A Chinese chess game. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I like this. What is this? This is a it's hanging a, rope? <laughs> it's a rope, and we even give them a book. If they don't behave, them we hang them. Is it what it is? <laughs> yeah. No. They can tie themselves together if they want. <laughs> yeah. So this is a magic uh, rope trick, you know, yeah. show you how to play your trick. Huh? That's right. So they can play trick or treat, you know, in the In the aircraft, that's keep uh -huh. busy. And, and also have the book, eh? the lock book and all those stuff. Yeah, we have a lock book. They can record what's happening throughout the flight. Mm -hmm. so if they, they want to read, they can read the book. Now, yes. what the heck is this? Mystery. Oh, good. And it lightened mystery. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And what other, what other services do you have for the children? Uh, we have a super discovery club for the young yeah. children. And uh, they can join that club. Uh, and it's just like a Marco Polo club. Marco like, Polo. Uh, what is that? Uh, Marco is Polo Italian? club is... <laughs> no, it's a business club. Business for club. For those oh, uh, children see. who fly very often. And, then, and they uh, get a cap. Yes. And they get oh, the captain to sign a log book. Too. They yeah, get uh, t-shirts. Yes, and it's Cathay Pacific captain there. <laughs> so I'll be the captain. Okay. Yes. And then what about the flying mum? When oh, I yes. was in Hong Kong, I was told there's a flying mum. What is that program exactly? Uh, actually, it's uh, for more... Uh, if you have a group of children, more than six of them traveling on one aircraft, it's impossible for the ca uh, cabin crew to take care of them. So uh, we hire a... Not really hire. We actually give a free ticket to a captain's wife. Oh, uh, So she can travel back to London or to Vancouver and uh, take care of the children while we do our work. Uh -huh. And then they're there to tell stories and look yeah, after them? Yeah, look after them, make sure they don't do, uh, jump over everybody's head mm -hmm. and everything. That sounds yeah, good. Really and uh, they, they will take care of the children until they arrive at their destination and yes. hand it over to Hand the, it over to the parents. Now, how do they know that the parents are the actual parents, you know, at the destination? <laughs> oh, we, we, we give them a little card it called unaccompanied minor, so everybody knows they're unaccompanied. Right. So, uh, and then uh, when they get there, do they check with the parents' picture? Hey, show me your family <laughs> picture. Now, this is uh, one and this is two, that kind of thing. Yes, we do. I think it's a good idea, you know? Check. Yes, so that uh, nobody gets kidnapped. Yeah, <laughs> right. And also, when you go to the airport, you yes. don't say hi to everybody. Yes. When you see somebody's name is Jack, you never say, hi, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you can say, hi, Jean, but not hi, Jack. You know, that's yes, all right. That's right. Well, thanks very much. I really oh. appreciate it. Oh, and next time, you know, when I have children flying, I would look up, you know, look for you and the uh, Cafe Pacific <laughs> Airlines. All right. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this show. We hope that you will tune in again and travel with us around the world without leaving, you know, your living room. Now, I enjoyed this, and I hope uh, you did too.